very educative webinar session that we uh, we generally conduct webinars every week very very periodically and this is a very exclusive one which we have brought in front of you recently we just celebrated the teachers day this webinar is dedicated to all the educators in remembrance of the contribution made by every teacher in our lives and therefore this topic for the evening today is necessity of training in education management to present this we have a very eminent educationist among us dr shubhir nag who is the principal of chhatrapur roy college of education let me extend a warm welcome to our speaker our moderator professor siddhartha shengupta our principal dr shuman kumar don all our faculty members staff students and most importantly teachers before we proceed let me introduce the calcutta business school which comes under the sikshatan foundation a center for excellence sikshatan foundation is the apex body of the following educational institutions namely the marwadi balika vidyalaya which was set in 1920 and therefore as a foundation we are more than 100 years old today then it was sri sikshatan school established in 1954 followed by the sri sikshatan college established in 1955 the trustees the society the trustees of the society started a residential management institution in july 2008 styled as the calcutta business school under the stewardship of mr sk birla who is also the president of the society sikshatan foundation there are also other eminent members very closely associated as trustees they belong to the duncan group the khaitan group the imami group the hayat group the podar group the rasoi group the usha martin group the sec the secretary general of the foundation is mrs bhrati bhattacharya while mr shorob ghosh is the senior advisor of the group calcutta business school is one of the top aicte approved autonomous management institutes in the eastern region it provides two year full time post graduate diploma in management various faculty development programs as well as the management development programs at a place called bishnupur near joka kolkata towards diamond harbor the school located within the eco friendly lush green and a sprawling 15 acre smart campus provides academic excellence and excellent domains of co curricular activities cbs has international exchange programs from time to time This business school has regular activities like webinars, seminars, and workshops like this on different areas apart from academics. Calcutta Business School also organizes excellent placements for its students. The group consists of more than ten thousand students and five hundred staff members as of today. Before introducing our chief speaker in detail and our moderator, let us have a look at a very short video from our Mr. Sunil Roy. Let's have the video, sir. If excelling is your essence, then you are welcome to Calcutta Business School, center of excellence, centered on excellence. It all started in the year 1920 when some eminent industrialists of Kolkata founded the Marwari Balika Vidyalaya. Later, in 1954, Sri Shikshatan School was founded. And in 1955, Sri Shikshatan College came into being with the objective of further propagating quality education to girls. All these institutions have continued to excel under the management of the Shikshatan Foundation. It has been guided by industrialists like President Mr. S K Birla, Director Emeritus Birla Brothers Private Limited, Mr. Siddharth Birla, Vice President. Mr G K Khaitan trustee and president of Shikshatan College Mr R S Goenka trustee and MD of Imami group and many other reputed industrialists the secretary general of the foundation is Mrs Brothuti Bhattacharya greetings i would like to speak a few words about our institution the shikshatan foundation the year was 1920 when some of my forefathers uh thought that female education needed to be propagated much more actively than was the custom in those days and we donated from our family two buildings in the heart of bada bazar 
for the girl for the girl child to be educated there that institution is still working the latest addition to our bouquet of institutions has been the calcutta business school which was started a few years ago uh, on a 15 acre plot of land and uh, not very far away from iim calcutta calcutta business school offers an aict approved autonomous two year full time residential program on post graduate diploma in management majoring in subjects like finance marketing it operations and human resource but it's the unique cluster of courses that sets it apart interactive and intuitive games like management game and stock market simulation game It also puts heavy emphasis on data handling and business analytics and uses databases and software like CMIE Prowess, MetaStock, R and SAP. Kolkata is the city of joy. It is the cultural capital of India, a city which has its soulful embodiment of culture love mystery respect and enthusiasm a city that upholds a perfect juxtaposition between the old world and the modern one it has given us many noble laureates over the years it has iconic institutes like the calcutta university the national library presidency university bisho bharati iim calcutta and many such legendary institutes Calcutta Business School's AICTE approved PGDM program is carrying forward this rich legacy of Kolkata. Thank you very much Sunil. So it's time for me to introduce our uh, speaker for today, Dr. Shubhir Nag. Dr. Nag is an eminent teacher educator of the present time, principal of a government aided premier postgraduate teacher education institute called chhatrapati roy college of education he holds various administrative positions in two famous autonomous colleges and five universities he is the member of various government level curriculum committees advisory bodies invitee expert in state council of higher education he has been awarded various national and international recognition including fellow chartered educator in cclp unesco he is a resource person and chair person of various national and international conferences both in india and abroad he had had a brilliant academic background too as a presidency graduate and post graduate from science college securing university ranks and project work experience in ergonomics in iit pawai bombay pg diploma holder in psychological counseling university gold medalist from jadavpur university in education ba from st xavier's phd in social his psychology of science educations from cu dr nag served government colleges as assistant professor he is a reader in st xavier's college kolkata visiting faculty in post graduate physiology departments of presidency college and university in education departments of cu ignu nsou iasc he has wide range of research publications in various journals articles in popular dailies with more than 37 books in the fields of teacher education and counseling and more than 25 years of experience in the same we welcome you dr nag with a lot of uh, gratitude and thanks and before we proceed let me also introduce professor shiddhartha shengupta who is our uh, moderator for this uh, session uh, webinar session and also a very eminent professor in calcutta business school before i hand this over to professor shengupta may i request our principal dr shuman kumar don to come and give his introductory speech for the session over to you dr don good evening to all uh, thank you mr mitra now as a welcome address it is my pleasure to welcome the academicians educators of satyapriya college of training and education Calcutta Business School and academicians of other colleges in today's webinar titled as Necessity of Training in Education Management. We are also glad to have you all here 
good evening we appreciate your presence it is so wonderful that mr the dr nath the principal of satyapriya college of training and education the participants all along the colleges and universities in this evening while as we will be enriched after hearing the thoughtful and insightful lecture sessions from the speaker dr subin nath at the outset i would like to welcome the advisor dr advisor mr sodob ghosh and also the secretary general mrs bhotti bhattacharya who are not present today due to their some other works they are engaged right now i also welcome the professors faculty members staff managers students phd students mphil students in the august gathering for the webinar on necessity of training in education management now what comes the necessity of education management as we know that the value of any educational system depends on its capability to continuously achieve the national and societal goals as well as individual aims so it is a complex no doubt it is a complex task that entails the individual local national efforts involving so much physical resources and also the human inputs now in any management system we know that that must be that must have the effective utilization of resources now for effective utilization of resources of this human and material resources therefore it is essential to have a proper system of management which enables the educational system to achieve its goal now every system whether it is business or in the, that uh, that uh, these things into the societal system that must have the goal so we have to fulfill the goal and the goals must have we have to achieve the goal for the betterment of society by and in any any and in the education institution we have to fulfill the, fulfill the goals by maintaining the or coherent activities of the material resources educational inputs and intellectual capitals in my opinion management can simply be defined as an art and science of getting things done to others this is the general notation general definition of management however the simple definition must not misguide us that educational management is state for what an easy task rather it is tough and intricate responsibility an educational manager has to plan imaginatively manage efficiently control capably guide wisely lead competently and direct ingeniously between the because the success of this institution greatly depends upon how effectively he or she performs his or her tasks it is important that an educational manager must be properly equipped to it relevant and necessary knowledge as well as skills to achieve the objectives of the educational institution therefore the requires the request to run an effective educational institution one has to has one one must have the skills and proper skills are required to manage an educational institutions so the knowledge skills and proper attitude is required 
Moreover, this is an age of continuous change in every walk of life. There are many developments occurring inside and outside the educational institutions. These changes necessitate the professional development training of the educational managers. So therefore, training is required and proper training to manage an educational institute is very much required to update the skills of the teachers and also to enhance the knowledge for improving teaching and learning, which lead to better job performance. Now, uh, if I talk about what are the needs of the educational management to create congenial environment at institutional level for the attainment of the aims and objectives of the educational system, in particularly, and in general, knowledge of relevant management theories, principles, concepts, techniques, skills, and strategies are required. Why educational management is necessary? Educational management is uh, aims at, educational management aims at improvement, improvement of process of planning, organizing, and implementing within the institution that creates enhancing and maintaining a positive public image of the education. Now the key issues of an educational management the most problems in uh, why we want to manage an educational institute, there are 10 common problems which I can refer. That is paper-based process, online registration, admission and enrollment, course management, teacher evolution, communication and collaboration, classroom management strategy, student monitoring and mentoring. So these are very much required and also the research and collaboration activities, research activities. Therefore, uh, uh, I would like, we all, all, all we like to hear from Dr. Subinna that from his thought provoking lecture session and also we can enhance our knowledge domain, how to manage in a better way the educational institute. So these are the common parameters, all we know, but we want to learn more from Dr. Subinna. Thank you very much. Over to uh, Mr. Mitro. Thank, Thank you very much, Dr. Don, for a very, very valuable input that you shared with us. Uh, so now it's time to welcome Dr. Subinna along with uh, Professor Shiddhartha Shengupta. But before that, let me thank each and every participant who are who is essentially a teacher, a faculty, an instructor, an educator. So for joining this session, uh, stay with us. A bit louder. Yeah, can you hear me, uh, Dr. Professor Shengupta? Is this better? Yeah, now I can hear you, yeah. Okay. So before I welcome uh, Dr. Shubhinag and Professor Shengupta, you, I wanted to thank every faculty, every teacher, every instructor, every educator who are present here and who have taken so much of, uh, so much of their time on a Saturday evening to join this uh, session. So over to you, uh, Professor Shengupta, and welcome Dr. Shubhinag. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's, it's actually a privilege uh, having got a chance to interact with uh, Professor Nag, who has been in educating and also training how to educate. That's his uh, expertise area. And definitely while uh, Dr. Nag, while you have been educating people and training uh, students or, I mean, teachers, how to educate. I just uh, would like to draw a uh, request to you that how had been the journey and then uh, in few words, and then your, uh, of course, we'd like to know what is the necessity of managing education. So, Dr. Nath, uh, welcome. Yes, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shengupto. Thank you very much. And you are uh, quite aware because we had a talk earlier also several times on this issue. And actually, the entire concept came out of uh, 
out of a lot of discussion which we had uh, with our students for last 10 years almost for last 10 years when we were uh, giving teachers training in uh, this college or before becoming principal of this college in St. Xavier's when I was there in the teachers training department. So when I was teaching all these young teachers doing either BA or MA, there was a necessity felt by these uh, trainees, these young trainees that, uh, sir, don't you think that there is a necessity of training in the field of management? Because usually what we see, usually, that a teacher who is teaching history or chemistry, suddenly, uh, maybe by the order, government order, or maybe uh, following an interview, uh, suddenly become uh, an administrator, becoming an headmaster or principal or vice chancellor, register, controller. And now everyone, uh, all of you are aware that a lot of uh, private colleges and universities are coming up. So the need for uh, this type of educational administration, the administrators, are becoming more and more every day. And without any formal training, this type of uh, responsibility, if it is bestowed on a teacher, a, a teacher, a poor teacher who is teaching a subject, quite knowledgeable in uh, his or her area, suddenly uh, taking the chair of a principal and facing a lot of problem uh, related to administration. So that was actually the backdrop when we all started feeling and I had a very nice uh, exchange of views with uh, faculty members and other uh, others uh, initiated by Chandrajit Babu and then followed by Siddhartha Babu and others also uh, from Calcutta Business School. And we developed, uh, we consolidated this concept. Gradually, we came up with an outline of the curriculum as Siddhartha Babu has already uh, seen that curriculum, the outline curriculum. That yes, this is actually the way how we can give more emphasis on specialized training for educational administration. Common management issues are there. You are all expert in that field. We are in the field of teachers training. And if we join hands, these two institutions, Calcutta Business School and Shotopur College of Education, we personally feel, we believe, yes, maybe we will be able to give uh, effective training to our young budding junior teachers those who are aspiring for this post of administration uh, in the future because we need this type of that is actually the backdrop and that is the uh, initiation of this idea of postgraduate diploma in educational management and we are looking ahead to have this collaboration as soon as our enrollment uh, takes place we will start this course jointly with you Sir, over to you, Siddhartha Babu. Sir, please unmute. Sir, please unmute. You are muted. Yeah. Now, to go ahead, I would uh, like to really understand that as the economy is growing, as the, as the number of, you know, uh, we are trying to get more number of students in, uh, in go, uh, going to colleges and universities. And uh, like uh, today, I think as of today, the uh, gross enro enrollment ratio will be around 26%. So, and uh, I think by 30, 30, uh, 2030, uh, India would like to go to a level of 30% or maybe 35%. In order to do that, what do you think is the, I mean, what is your opinion? I mean, we are all eager to listen to you. Uh, from your expertise, what are the uh, steps? I shouldn't say challenges. We can do it. What are the steps uh, government uh, should take? And what is the role of the management, uh, edu uh, managing the education system as a whole? What is your take on that? And uh, Right, you are absolutely the yeah, because uh, another gross enrollment ratio. I think for the countries like USA and uh, many countries in Europe, it's around fifty percent or more, more than that. So in our country, it will be huge, as I've already told you that yes, necessity of having more and more private institutions. So government cannot do everything on their own. So the that should be the preferable model is always PPP model, private public partnership. 
So we will have to also come forward uh, to support government because government cannot do everything uh, on their own. So can we initiate this type of collaborative program? With, uh, this is actually the vision with which we are proceeding towards this type of collaborative courses. When uh, we are very much eager to join hands with you because you are the core business management people. So you know management and we know teacher state. If both of us, we become friends, we hold our hands together. I think that uh, meaningful training may be given to the teachers, junior right. teachers, those who will be good uh, administrators in future. So it is not expecting that all the educational administrators are born. You should not expect. Because as you are rightly saying that uh, due, due to this uh, increased number of gross enrollment ratio that more and more institutions are required and huge number of uh, students will be coming to this uh, educational institutions, schools, colleges, universities. So there is a necessity of more and more institutions coming up. And as we are all aware that uh, the government cannot bear this expense. So there will be private uh, enterprises growing more in this field of higher education especially in the university and college. So we need more and more administrators in this field. And as I told you earlier, that without any training, expecting all the teachers to be born administrators, we know exactly, we teachers, I'm not naming any uh, institution or any person, it's not uh, ethically right, but we know from our practical experience uh, day to day that without this type of exposure in management, uh, this type of, uh, administrative responsibilities cannot be properly uh, taken care of. So we face problems. Who are the sufferers? Who are the stakeholders? Our beloved students. They suffer from a lot of administrative issues. They complain. A lot of media people, they run, uh, run up, uh, with uh, their boom and camera after them, even uh, in front of uh, renowned uh, universities. I'm not naming any. A lot of student unrest and everything happening because of some small, small mistakes done in decision-making policy. And as you are all aware that this is very much part of management science. Decision-making is an art. You must know how to take a decision and how quickly you can take that effective. So these are the areas on which we are going to develop this course uh, for this young budding uh, junior teachers aspiring for administrative baths. And we believe in making those administrators, training those administrators, not expecting that all the teachers are born administrators and anybody can become principal or anybody can become vice chancellor or headmaster and run the institution smoothly. So they will have some problems. But as you all, we are all aware that in case of, uh, I was also very young when I was in St. Xavier's and I was uh, helping our administrators at that time, fathers, principals, uh, and vice principals. And uh, I was a member in various committees. Now, actually what happens? Sometimes even in my college, when I select my faculty member to help me in various committees, subcommittees, definitely we select on the basis of certain attributes. Now, these attributes are very important. All the teachers cannot have similar type of attributes, as rightly uh, Principal Sarah said, Professor Don has said in his welcome address, that to a proper aptitude, proper attitude with certain effective skills related to management is very much necessary in this case. And when these type of uh, skills are not, uh, this is not hereditary possibly, that all the skills are involved. So we'll have to train them. We'll have to give them some exposure, handle a lot of case studies, as uh, you have already shown in your excellent presentation in the beginning, that a lot of simulated uh, situations are given in case of management challenges, issues, so that they can be trained in this system for these two semesters, for one year course, what we are planning. And uh, within this one year, we will be able to give them this training so that in future, they may become better, I'm not saying best, at least better administrators to run their educational institution. That is our objective, basically. Yes, the Professor Shendu. Yeah, uh, and now uh, coming to coming to this, uh, you know, like uh, we, uh, today we see that uh, many of the healthcare uh, establishments are being managed by uh, a set of people who are not really from the healthcare uh, background or doctors. Absolutely. And in, in such a situation, uh, which I, some cases we find, but in uh, very good uh, uh, healthcare establishments are always the, at the helm of the institute, we find a doctor there. 
Now, in this case, what is your take on having a, uh, in a system where uh, you have to manage the education institution? So, what is your uh, opinion on that? That, I, uh, to my mind, it is the, the teacher who will be the best person to manage uh, the uh, an institution having uh, so many intellectual uh, uh, intellectuals uh, in it. So, what is your take on that? Yes, you are right. You are right. But actually, we had this idea earlier when we were at the time of Kothari Commission, that Indian Education Commission. Uh, there was a proposal of Indian Educational Service, like uh, IAS or ITS, CADA. So uh, that was a proposal that there will be a bunch of uh, people trained in this field and then coming up with this uh, IES CADA, and they will be running all these uh, educational institutions. But later on, that was not uh, cultivated further because of some specific reasons. Once, unless you become a teacher, as you are uh, rightly say, that yes, true, there are a lot of health service uh, institutions are going on with hospital management people, those who are not doctors. But we are all uh, aware that actually the problem what they, uh, these people face with this type of training, they can run only uh, some financial management part. But once the issue of some specific medical jargon comes, they fail to deliver. So they will have to consult the doctors or attending physicians. True, they will have to be part of this system, but along with that, uh, some uh, specialists in that field should be associated with this management system. Similarly, in case of educational institution, uh, I'm not naming any university uh, similarly, I'm not naming any person, but if any uh, university uh, administrator uh, suddenly becomes uh, that, uh, that administrator and asking uh, the fellow colleagues, uh, maybe other principals of other colleges, what is actually the academic calendar or what is actually uh, internship? So that is like a similar type of situation what those hospital management people they face when any medical jargon or any medical terminology comes uh, in case of handling the situation and then a lot of chaos is created in that system. So in order to avoid this type of chaos, it is always better because once you are a teacher, you become very close to your students. And this teacher-student rapport tells you about the feeling. So you develop that empathy, the power of empathy much more than any non-teaching uh, profession or person. Probably that was the main reason why even after the proposal was given in the Coterie Commission, IES cadre, it was not uh, proceeded or uh, encouraged further. So it is always better that we uh, prepare the teachers, those who can uh, become administrators in future. Non, not that that uh, a bunch of uh, professionals are there. Because in every institution, uh, as all of you are aware, that there are a lot of people associated with it. Like, suppose or whenever my college is handling with the account, I myself as a principal, I'm not supposed to be expert in accountancy. But I can hire... Uh, my internal auditor, a chartered accountancy firm, as my internal auditor to handle all these uh, audit-related uh, issues or uh, some specific accounts-related issues. In that way, we can hire those type of professionals to support our system, our office system. But at the top, you should have a doctor, even in uh, any hospital. I'm not naming any uh, specific hospital, but everywhere the super post is going to a medical profession. Similarly, the top, the vice chancellor, or the principal, or the headmaster, this post should be uh, going to a teacher. Now, he or she may be assisted by other persons, other professionals, in order to run various part of it. Now, before coming to that, I'm very, very much fond of stories. Uh, so, uh, let me, I was just reminded about one uh, mythological story. Whenever we are talking about managerial skills, that uh, one of the greatest uh, manager uh, was actually Lord Krishna himself. So it's a mythological story from Mahabharata. Everyone knows, I'm just repeating it uh, in short, that just before that Kurukshetra war, both Pandava and the Kaurava king, they went to uh, see Lord Krishna and uh, asking for his help. And what happened, everyone knows that uh, the Pandava king, he sat by uh, the side of his feet, and uh, the core of uh, Rujalan probably was uh, there, 
and Duryodhan, uh, king himself, so he sat on a throne uh, kept by the side of the bed of Lord Krishna. Then what happened after Lord Krishna uh, was uh, awake? And uh, what happened? He saw the Pandav king uh, sitting by the side of his feet first and gave first opportunity to, to him to ask, what do you want? I will be giving you the first opportunity. And the Kaurav king then uh, got the second opportunity. And the uh, most important thing is both of them were equally happy. So that is the management skill, making both the expectants equally happy. Now, this depends on the perception. He was God. He, he knew everything beforehand. Forget about that part. Consider him to be a manager. And see, in this type of conflicting situation, how you manage that. And uh, making both the people happy. And as perception, all of you know, that Pandava wanted Sri Krishna himself unarmed without taking part in the war, becomes Sarathi of Arjun. And uh, Durjodhan wanted the Narayan Sena. So he, go, he is also happy because he got the entire uh, 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 force, power that uh, Narayan Sena uh, in that war. So that is, that is perception. So managers in every aspect, a good manager should have that uh, power to read the perception of the person who is coming or aspiring to get something from him. So in that uh, specific uh, situation, a manager a managerial role plays. Now here uh, you can ask me that what is the necessity of a good administrator? Now even uh, answering this, I'll be giving you another, another this is not a story, this is a, a real life incident. Now listen, why a good administrator is required? What happens with a good administrator and uh, an average administrator, how, how they differ? See, there was a railway station. But this is a real life story. It's a very famous story in a, uh, a railway department. Everyone probably knows that. May not be very familiar with the teachers, but uh, I'm, I'm just uh, citing that in, in brief. There was a railway station in a remote uh, village, and that was not at, at all a busy station. One or two trains passed by, and even during the night, there was no train at all, even not even a good train. So that type of insignificant railway station was there. And a young uh, uh, station master came and joined that railway station. And after a few days, he observed that two armed guards were posted throughout the night on that uh, platform. And then he started inquiring or asking uh, the local police station why. Nobody could tell. Now this is uh, happening for last maybe 10, 20, 30 years. It is going on, it's a convention. Nobody knew why they were posted. And then this uh, young uh, fellow, they, he started inquiring that uh, why these two armed guards are required to organize on the platform where even not a single, even not a good train passed by. So stopping there or unloading or loading is out of question. But still two armed guards were there. Why? Then he started inquiring, asking higher authorities, going to even uh, higher authorities in the police. And then ultimately the funny thing came out that almost 20, 25 years back when this uh, platform was, or this railway station was constructed, the rail tracks were laid. So a lot of uh, iron beams were kept there. And just for the security reason of those iron beams, there was an order given by the government authority at that time that two armed guards will be posted during the night to uh, ensure the security of those costly uh, railway iron uh, beams which are used for to uh, lay that railway track. Now look, the order was given, but it was not withdrawn. And it continued for uh, decades, one after another. Till this young uh, station master came and started becoming very inquisitive and started uh, inquiring about that and ultimately coming to this uh, conclusion. So don't you think that this is a very funny situation? Now, exactly this is the reason why we need good administrators, good managers in every system, whether it is health service, whether it is educational institution, whether it is any other uh, system or any other service, where a person should be trained in the field of managerial skill from the system itself, say teachers in educational institutions, stays uh, from with a background of health service, 
in the health service system. So once they become uh, principals or vice principals or say coordinators or say uh, register vice chancellor, principal uh, headmasters, so they are definitely more aware about students' needs, aspirations, their problems, what type of problem they face, what they exactly need. So once they are more aware and they have got the natural rapport with their students, so naturally what they can do, they can learn these managerial skills like this type of courses, what we are thinking about, that they can become a much uh, better uh, administrator in future. As uh, we have already discussed that we should not expect that all the administrators will be born. So as all the teachers are not all, also born, so they are also trained. So if the teachers are trained in order to teach, so definitely why not administrate? Why not managers, educational managers? They should also uh, be trained. And we have got this type of curriculum as we are also handling this type of courses in our college for last more than 10 years because uh, in the IGNU MA education, we have got a special paper of educational management, which has got practical component as well. And we are doing it in our college for last 10 years. And we have got a special uh, diploma course also under IGNU and that is also handled by us in our college. So many of our faculty members are present in today's webinar, those who are actively uh, handling this type of courses in our college. So we think that a uh, few of uh, our faculty members will be able to give this type of uh, expertise in training uh, these budding aspirants, future aspirants of administrators. And at the same time, we can have collaboration with your institution where the core management people like you can give us some insight from your side uh, regarding this managerial skill or management issues. And we can uh, come together in this type of uh, two semester courses, one year courses to train the teachers in various managerial skills or administrative skills to develop engines in future, not bogies, because bogies will be bogies. They'll be always following. So they are good followers. We need good followers as well. But at the same time, we'll be pulling those bo bogies. We need engines. So we have to prepare these engines. Now, engines are not bogies. So you need to prepare them. You need to train them. You need to have some special training to make them engines so that they can pull the entire system forward. So that is actually the back, uh, backdrop. And uh, once we start this type of uh, courses, definitely we will have uh, training in uh, different issues of administration, uh, some operational dimensions, some organization management, some human resource management, financial management, leadership uh, training, human resource uh, issues, uh, some institutional planning aspect will be taken care of. And a lot of global perspectives that they are related to educational management. And definitely a lot of dissertation and research work in the form of projects will be undertaken. So in this way, a teacher, a trainee teacher, or a junior teacher already in the system, working as a junior teacher, can develop, as I told you earlier, that they should develop this type of attitude, aptitude, a positive aptitude towards this management or administration so that uh, they can be trained and they can learn all these uh, skills uh, like uh, the management people they learn so that as teachers in additional uh, professional skill development course uh, like this PGDEM and they can learn all these skills uh, along with their own teacher training skills and use it in their own managerial course, whatever course they are uh, have, uh, actually uh, getting in future, whether they are in university or Lot of lot of register controller, deputy register, deputy controller, like a lot of posts are required in future, and a lot of people will be required uh, from junior cadre. Even even if you don't uh, hold any post, as I, I have already given my own example, that when I was teaching in St. Xavier's, I was a simple teacher. I was teaching in class. But at the same time, I was a member in various administrative bodies starting right now. All of you know that St. Xavier's is an autonomous uh, college and they have ranked four among all the colleges in India. We are very proud about being a Zavidian myself. But actually, the thing is, when this uh, initiated, the entire uh, thing initiated, uh, the father principal at that time, Father P.C. Matthew, he uh, asked five of us to come forward. It was a very small uh, five-member committee to study autonomy. That was the first uh, step. 
study first study autonomy how it can be done or how it can be achieved and we started uh, doing the work and two of those two members are right now a registrar and controller in our St. Xavier's University other than me so uh, two five members uh, small committee so how we were selected maybe uh, Jesuit fathers uh, those who were uh, in charge of the administration they thought that some of us we have that aptitude or flair towards administration so we can handle this type of challenges and we can handle this type of issues so that they have selected our core committee uh, in the core committee and then uh, we were uh, trained initially uh, with all these uh, necessary uh, skills and then uh, gradually uh, when i started aspiring to become a principal and i uh, asked uh, father matthew that i'm going to leave he was not at all happy he was very annoyed in me very annoyed uh, you, are, you, are, you are leaving and uh, yes actually i'm uh, waiting for a promotion after all father it is a promotion he was very annoyed no i i won't give you release and if you don't give me release then i'll have to resign i i'll be oh you leave then you are determined that you'll be leaving so that happened that happened so then the last uh, trump card i uh, used that uh, father you are annoyed because i'm uh, one of your uh, key member in all these committees and you know that a lot of administrative burden i undertake in st xavier and you are annoyed for that but don't you think that i'm as a very and i'm a student of st xavier and don't you think that I, as a student of st xavier i'm becoming a principal of an institution uh, don't you think that that can be also one of the dimension to look into the matter and be happy that being as a very and becoming a principal so be happy father and release me and then he was smiling uh, you are very very chalu ha ah, very chalu ha huh? so that, like like this now this is actually the skill what you need to handle the situation and in this case whenever we are handling we in this type of courses definitely will be handling what is manpower and human capital what is the difference between these two how can a manpower be converted to human capital and there are a lot of lifestyle issues coming up and a very common term uh, as uh, in my introduction was said that Uh, yes, I was in IIT for some period of time for a project in ergonomics. So there is an ergonomic lifestyle. Now, in many advertisements nowadays, you will find out ergonomically designed chair, and this is actually a very common issue for all the IT professionals that they are having some problem in their cervical or lumbar spine when, for a very long period of time, they are using their laptop, uh, sitting in you know, the chair, and having all the postural problems with maybe problems in eyesight, etc. everything depends on the design of the work uh, workplace and this design issues are part of anthropometry and this is actually the part of ergonomics so unless we are aware about this ergonomic lifestyle these are all part of our training so unless a, an administrator whoever he or she may head master principal vice chancellor uh, developing some infrastructure developing some material uh, resources handling some material resources must be aware about all these design aspects otherwise how can he or she develop a good a work atmosphere working atmosphere just in order to reduce the stress the environmental stress physical stress uh, to the worker so in this way uh, we will have to consider what is the difference between autocracy and assertiveness you must be assertive at the same time it should not be you should not be autocratic what is the basic difference between assertiveness and autocracy what is the difference between a leader and a boss who is boss and who is a leader so these are the issues which will be taking up in our in our course man management very important or everyone knows that chaur of ganguly when he became captain of indian team uh, at that time uh, indian team cricket team was going uh, very uh, bad time uh, facing a very bad time and with that man management and selecting the right person and then ultimately the india team was the cricket team was totally transformed and that is one of the way how two models we have seen even after shorob when ms dhoni came whenever uh, shorob uh, used to win uh, in any game his body language shows that yes india has won shorob has won but even never find out that body language in ms dhoni models are different so whenever we are talking about man management human beings are different the quality of expression they whatever the way they express it is different the way onil kumble used to express his happiness and the way virat kohli expresses his happiness are different so whenever you are handling the human resource 
uh, man management you must be aware how to handle this and that is the way how shorov used to handle sachin on one end and uh, javagal srinath on another end and uh, rajiv raj singh on another end in uh, this type of thing so that is the best uh, thing is bringing out the best from the individual as it is already said by professor shen gupta as well to make it effective in order to make it effective how to bring the best out of that individual what to do there are certain managerial skills some models some theories are there so the most important thing is our faculty members are already already doing it in our courses uh, is part of our emit course as well that yes that what you will have to do first you will have to make the thing effective that bring the best out of the individual how how can you do that how vision and mission of an institution may be framed because on the basis of that vision and mission the institution runs and how can you design it how can you consider these uh, things and make it into the practice not only uh, theoretically uh, you are correct but practically also how to implement so all very good nice nice words were uh, mentioned in our indian constitution at that time of when it was uh, framed but how many of those pledges constitution and pledges were properly implemented even now after so many years of independence that is that is actually the sad thing and the most important uh, issue behind this is lack of proper management skills any person cannot uh, become a manager or an administrator and this is the best example growth we are talking about human resource material resource how they should be planned whenever we are talking about any growth and how the balance should be Uh, given and that is very important for an education education institution educational institution is not only a material handling it is handling human beings we are producing not only uh, money or profit we are actually developing human capital for our future for our nation so that is very important so education institution should not look for profit earning we should look for productivity in terms of the human quality the quality of the students who are coming out of the institution i am very proud about my institution because uh, even uh, that uh, few days back the police officer who came for police verification from vidhanagar commissionerate was asking me sir apparently the, your institution looks very small a very small building a small campus but uh, i am very much surprised because several times i am coming uh, to your institution for police verification and i am very much surprised that how so many students of your institution getting government jobs nowadays everyone knows that nobody is getting any job but i am very proud and we are keeping all the record in our college our faculty members those who are present here they know in our uh, office we are keeping all the record for so last even within pandemic situation for last two years so many of our students they have qualified in csc they have qualified in psc they have qualified in ssc they have qualified in tet they have got uh, employment as si so all these police verification i had to sign uh, proving authenticity of, the, of my student so those who are doing this ba or ma from this college this institution they are qualifying for government job even uh, during this pandemic situation within the last 2 uh, years and that uh, police officer of the vidhanagar commissioner was so surprised to uh, see that few days back in vidhan uh bikash bhavan also i was uh, telling this uh, to our minister in charge that this is actually what about our college so the, he was also very happy is it was nice very good so this is actually uh, something what we need in an educational there's not only profit this is the profit what we are getting you can you can measure it with uh, amount of money this is actually the quality of the student who are produced and in order to produce the quality student you need a quality leadership and in order to give that quality leadership you will have to learn not only learn all this theory like swot analysis etc etc but at the same time you should be flexible enough to allow them intellectual romanticism now this intellectual romanticism what is that let me clarify i was very fortunate to have one of my professors in science college who used to visit 25 countries 25 countries when we were in iit for that project training uh, even the director of that industrial design center in our iit pawai 
Dr. Gaur Gopal Ray was his student. So he was of that stature, the professor of that stature, Professor Arun Shen. So he used to visit 25 countries and used to give lecture on ergonomics in all these countries, pioneering this subject. This is actually human factor engineering. And he used to tell us when we were commonly students what they do. Once they start their class, they ask, sir, what is the syllabus? So one of the students, they ask the syllabus. Uh, we also ask the same thing. Uh, sir, what is our syllabus in ergonomics? What we will be learning? So what sir said uh, uh, as an answer, we will never forget that. Syllabus, what is syllabus? Whatever I will teach you, that is syllabus. Because whatever is printed in the book are all outdated, all backdated. Learn it from me. Whatever personal experience I'm gathering for you visiting these 25 countries, learn it from me. And whatever I'll be teaching in the class, that will be your syllabus. This is called intellectual romanticism. Can we provide that? Do we uh, really uh, equip enough to tell our students that forget about books, forget about study materials, whatever we teach in the class, whatever we discuss in the class, is your syllabus. That is your syllabus. Learn that and practical experiences, whatever we are sharing, learn that and you will excel in your life because we are handling all these real life uh, case studies, all the challenges or the problems. So in that simulated situation, as you we were uh, talking about, even in business, you are doing that. In stock market, you are doing that. We can do it in our own education institution as well with real students. Counseling is one of the very, very basic fundamental as we are also uh, having this type of diploma courses in our college. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, uh, Professor Shengupto. Now, uh, I've already given because this is actually the problem with teachers. Once we start talking, we can't stop. So Professor Shengupto, sorry, I've already taken enough time, long time. Now over to you uh, to add, or if you have got any question, I've already taken enough time. Thank you very much, Professor Shengupto. All right. Yeah, I, before I uh, go to the audience to ask you questions, one uh, very, I was clear about knowing what, uh, you talked about man management, you also talked about finance, but what particularly you had in mind while developing this course of uh, education management, you know, post-graduate diploma in education management? Scope. Yeah. Scope, pardon? What, what that scope? point you had in mind? Striking a balance between uh, financial and um, um, human resource. We'll have to strike a balance. And that is actually the practical case study, what we'll have to handle right. in the practical situation. Once the problem comes, we'll have to select uh, between these two. We'll have to strike a proper balance between these two. As I told you, that profit making is not our objective. Our objective is man making. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I would uh, request the participants here uh, uh, to ask questions. Uh, Dr. Nag is here. To, yes, please. Yes. Uh, answer yes. to clear all your, uh, to give you all uh, the clarifications that are needed. So. Yes. Uh, Uh, yeah, uh, any question to Dr. Nath? Hello? Is there any question? Or is it so nicely clarified that they don't have any doubt or any yeah. question in their yeah. mind? So any doubt Maybe. you have, because it's a very unique program that 
he has launched. Maybe, maybe they and, don't have any uh, really, doubt. I mean, uh, and that is why not, they are not asking any questions. So, is there any program which we'd like uh, you to clear your doubts? And... Yes, sure. Please come up with your question. I'm right. ready to answer. Because this is a new dimension we are going to start in the field of educational management and that maybe uh, in future this will be one of the major course who knows right. maybe uh, there will be an ma course in educational management itself right now this is a special paper under ma in education but maybe in future this will be a ma course itself who knows because the knowledge is expanding so fast the information science is expanding so fast and once we are talking about achieving any goal or any dream we are talking about leadership we start with belief system first you start with a belief model and then you gather that self confidence and mm -hmm. gather that mental strength to uh, go ahead to achieve your dream or goal so there are a lot of issues to be discussed and once we get that opportunity in the class to discuss as you are all aware that we have already developed the curricular structure outlined and we have kept a lot of flexibility within the curricular structure so that it is up to the individual faculty member, as I've already mentioned about intellectual romanticism. Within that outline framework, the faculty member is free, uh, should feel free to discuss about the theories or the models, whichever he or she feels best uh, in case uh, solving any challenge or any, any, any specific uh, problem situation whatever a manager may face in case of any educational institution. So yes, eagerly waiting for questions from participants, please ask questions. I... Uh, Mr. Mitro. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh... So actually, I just I would like to know that uh, I already have a post graduation diploma in HR management. So if I opt for this course, will it be an added advantage for me, or it will be okay with the uh, I'm also an MA. So will it be okay with that post graduation diploma in HR? Probably Professor Shengupta will be better equipped uh, to answer this because you have already uh, done one uh, a training in HR, human resource. So human resource training is one of the basic training in core management. And uh, what we are discussing is application of this human resource development in the field of educational management. So you have already done the core, core aspect. And Professor Shengupta probably will be uh, able to uh, answer this question much better than me. Professor Shengupta, please. Yeah, ma'am, ma Samosi, ma'am, have you got your uh, doubts clear? Uh, so, if you please clarify me in a uh, more, I mean, uh, so actually, I was in a dilemma whether I would go for this course or not, uh, because I am also an MA. So, will it be effective for me? Because it will take another year along with the money. So shall I go for this course or HR management will be okay for me? Okay. So uh, this is something we can uh, talk later because uh, this uh, we can address it later. Particularly to this course, if you have any query, we can uh, address. I mean, Dr. Now will be too glad to address that. Yes, as I told you earlier that HR management is a very uh, basic management area, which is actually a core area. So you have already trained yourself uh, in that core area. Now we will be uh, specifying or applying that in the field of uh, educational management. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I'm Dr. Moshmi Boral. I would like to ask a question to Dr. Nath. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Uh, sir, can you hear? 
Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible, ma'am. Yeah. Please, go ahead. So I would like to ask uh, Dr. Nag that uh, most probably you would be knowing me because I'm from his institution only. That uh, I would like to ask that are leaders born or any person with uh, any experience develop an abled organizational leadership to lead uh, uh, any institution, educational institution, I mean to say, lead to success? Leaders are born or any person through experience can oh. also develop an educational, uh, can also de uh, develop that able organizational leadership so that the, so that that particular institution can reach the success. Yeah. So are they born or it develops also? I, I, Dr. Nan? Dr. Nan? Till date, it, is, it was a uh, true experience. Till date. All the, all the administrators uh, selected or uh, during the interview, even till date, it is dependent on experience. But what we are actually trying to emphasize that if you are getting the opportunity of further training in this type of skill development, this professional skill development, if we go through this new education policy, 2020, it is, it is mentioned there that a lot of professional skill developments are necessary in various fields. This is one of the fields, what we are talking about. So once you are getting the opportunity of developing the skill, it would be added to your experience. Experience is definitely necessary, but at the same time, uh, this skill-oriented training gives you a better understanding of the issues or the challenges or the problems, what an administrator may face in an educational institution. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, any other question? No, it's okay. Thank you. So we can see that uh, leaders are not born. So it is not that hereditary that uh, one that one has to become a leader. So that uh, particular uh, person next to the uh, some person who is uh, side by side looking for that person has to become a leader. So any person who develops the skill or the, has acquired the efficiency can surely become a uh, can uh, can be uh, have have the leadership. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. I, sure. Sure. Address that. Right, you are. Yes. Nani, Thank and you, next sir. question, please. Next question. Yeah, uh, ma'am, uh, uh, has your uh, question been clear to you? Ma'am, Dr. Bora? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, it's okay. okay. Any other question from our esteemed audience? I think we should have some more questions. Yeah. Hello? Are there any questions? I should be should be some more questions here. Okay, uh, then in that case, uh, what I would uh, request, uh, Mr. Chandrajit Mitro, I think we can. Uh, uh, the questions have all been cleared. I think the people have really definitely loved the uh, uh, address that delivered by Dr. Nath. So we would uh, request Chamrit, uh, Mr. Mitro, to uh, uh, to I mean deliver the vote of thanks and close the uh, session before we close the session. Mr. Mitro, please. Mr. Mitro, we are not able to hear you.
you are not audible Yeah. You are not audible. 